Hey guys. Hey. Hello. Hey guys. Guys. Hey. Hey you. Oh, sorry we didn't see you there. We were just discussing the relative merit of affixing a 3D object to a two-dimensional surface utilizing prefabricated pigments and a variety of mediums. What? Oh, we're just talking about drawing. Oh, why are you talking about that? Well, we want to submit posters to the Nisqually Watershed Festival Poster Contest. What is that? Well, every year students submit posters based on a theme related to the Nisqually Watershed, and winners are picked from every grade. Yeah, but do I win a prize? Well, it's a great chance to learn about the watershed, and we can be creative, and maybe we'll even win a prize. But how do I pick what to draw? That is a good question. Come with us, and we can actually show you. Oh, cool. Thanks, guys. And away from this box. Yeah, good luck. It sounds fun. I'm excited. I like to draw. This poster contest is about the Nisqually Watershed. Most of you either live in the Nisqually Watershed or probably very close to it. So why not take inspiration from the watershed itself? What do you find most interesting about the watershed? What's your favorite animal in the watershed? Mwah. Where's your favorite outdoor place in the watershed? Why not go for a walk and see what catches your eye? Whoa, what was that? See, you could go outside. You could use binoculars. You could even try using field guides or other books, or maybe even an online resource if that's what works to learn more about what you want to draw. The Nisqually Watershed is such an exciting place with so many interesting plants, animals, and places. I'm sure you'll find something to learn about and draw. Oh, look over there. Oh. Yeah, no, I think it's that one. Oh. And so here our great explorers find something to look at, learn about, and perhaps even draw. Gonna make a poster! Yeah. You may get excited and want to add as many things as possible to your poster, but watch what happens when we add too much. I'm gonna draw some barns, oh, I think. Yeah, there's a, oh, a big oh, sun. Like oh, look at that bear. That's a good bear. Oh, flowers are great. Oh, look at these more birds. birds. Oh, like more grass. Birds. We have different kinds I'll of grass. I'll put a bird on top of this oh, tree. Oh, that tree looks great. I, I like the mountain climbing. One of them's falling oh, down. A bird on top of the mountain. We need an airplane. Oh, an airplane. Yeah. Oh, that cabin is nice. And an airplane. I just really like airplanes. And let's have all of this quality. Just all of it. All of this quality. Everything. Just one, maybe two subjects to focus on. And then focus put them on. big in the center of your Big paper. in center. This will make your subject okay. stand out. Stand out. Also stand out. Lots of room to add oh, details. Oh, add details. With your subject right. front and center, you can then decide what to do with the background. You can draw the habitat that your organism ha habitat. lives in. Habitat. Okay. You can use colors and patterns. Oh, co Be colors and patterns. Oh, all right. Are you feeling frustrated? Yes. Are you feeling like you can't draw? Yes. Are you feeling like you have no place to start? Yes. Then I will teach you something. Artists have many different methods and processes, and you can too. And one of them is called the shapes method. Yay! Basically, you start off by drawing the big shapes you see in your subject, and then gradually adding in more detail. See, I saw a big oval for the body, there was a smaller circle for the head, a little triangle for the beak. And once you have those shapes down, you start connecting the shapes, adding in details, making little changes. Remember, if you draw in pencil and if you start off drawing lightly, you can keep adding and erasing until you're happy with your picture. See, look, here I am at the end of my picture changing the beak. No problem. Doo -doo -doo! Art supplies, there are many to choose from. You could use pencil and eraser, watercolors, colored pencils, Mini colored pencils, <clears throat> markers, oil pastels, crayons, paints, even scissors and construction paper and end with a fine pen. I read in a field guide, the barn swallows build their nests out of clay right on the sides of barns, so that's what I drew on my poster. Here you can see my barn swallow, and look, there's its clay nest. Great. I'm using oil pastels, and my favorite thing about them is how you put all the color down where you want it, and then you get to use your fingers to blend it all together. That's so pretty. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I learned online that barn swallows eat insects. 
So I decided to use watercolor to show that. Here you can see the field. Here's Excellent. my barn swallow. Excellent. I use different colors of watercolor to show the shapes and the shading of my bird. Here's some detail that I added with a fine pen. And look, here so are fine. all of its insects. So I went to the refuge and at the twin barns I noticed that there are all these barn swallows yeah. flying around so I figured well hey they might like this habitat yeah. I'll draw my poster on that. Ooh. So I went home and I pulled out my crayons and my watercolors. Oh, I started with crayons and it gives its texture once I put the yeah. watercolor on. Check it out. And then I even used a white crayon and I drew all these clouds and once I added the watercolor they just appear out of nowhere. That's amazing. Thanks. It was a lot of fun to draw. Woohoo. Our judges will be looking at your posters and thinking about originality artistic skill, and accuracy. It's your poster to make how you want, but remember, it does have to be an accurate drawing that our judges can recognize. I love how you can see all the feathers and the wings. And I really enjoy how you can see all the shading in this bird. And look at this fantastic use of color. It's phenomenal. Amazing. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Remember, research what you'll be drawing, have a great time, and we, and we can't, can't wait, wait to see, see your poster. poster. Bye!